Yep, go ahead and start recording. Um, can somebody close the doors in back, please? Okay, is everybody familiar with Chatham House Rule? Okay, short version of what's on the screen. You can tweet it, make mention of it, talk about it. You can't say who said it or who they're affiliated with. That covers both the speaker and the audience. And basically it's to protect our identities. We are gonna be talking about the darker side of the internet today. Um, this presentation talks about human trafficking, okay? This is modern day slavery. This is going to be a case of talking about rape, kidnappings, assaults, some cases murder, and other, threats, other types of crimes, including threats on life and whatnot. Um, I'm very paranoid about this talk. This is the first time I've ever given it publicly. Um, by staying, if you, if you want to get up and leave, nobody's gonna hold it against you, okay? But by staying, you're agreeing that you accept the, the, the previous two slides plus the Chatham House rule. Does anybody have a problem with that? Okay, so project history. This started off as a talk for a intelligence analysis class. We were told to pick a topic that we could stick with for 16 weeks and see where it takes you. The whole, go the whole goal of the process was to find open source data that was publicly available and then take the data and do link analysis on it. The goal is to try to find where things are. It is really to teach us how to use a software called I2, Analyst Notebook, which is used by multiple forms of military and governments around the world to do link analysis. It takes the data, it, can, it combines it together. It's like Meltigo, but not as powerful. My laptop was stolen last year. It had all my research data on it. It had all of my notes. It had my white paper. It had personal identification on it. Um, move the mic down a little bit. It wasn't a good day. And I worked with law enforcement for two weeks trying to get it back. I searched Craigslist daily, daily for it, back pages daily, <clears throat> and was not able to find it. Most likely, most likely some knucklehead had an opportunity to take it, they just started using it as a regular laptop, not realizing that on it were lists of police officers to compromise cases, drug cartel leaders, because there's a lot of crossover between trafficking and drugs. Um, and they had all my stuff on it, so I restarted the project using Maltigo this time. Again, for the people that are walking in, we are under Chatham House rule. You can talk about it, you can tweet about it, you cannot attribute it. So no, attribute, no attributions to anybody in this room. Um, so what is human trafficking? I mean, I haven't my, there were. The Department of State has a nice big wall of text. Um, basically, it is doing anything through coercion, fraud, force. Like I said earlier, is modern day slavery. Prostitution is included in there if you're under 18, or if it's done through threats of violence, kidnapping, force. Too long, didn't read. Michigan State Police has a much better version, much shorter. Trafficking consists of recruiting, harboring, transporting, providing, or obtaining a person for compelled labor or commercial sex acts through force, fraud, or coercion. So what is human trafficking? According to black market site viewer, um, a site that actually tracks black marketing, it is a $32 billion industry. That's a year, right? Now, nobody actually keeps official records on this. Again, for those walking in, we are under Chatham House rule. You can talk about this, you cannot attribute it. Um, so, 20.9 million in 2003. That is the last estimate that they have of the number of people being trafficked. And that means that, based on those numbers, a human, a human person is worth just over $1,500. That's it. Now, this isn't a happy place, this isn't a pretty place, right? That's all a person's worth. And people that get trafficked don't last more than three years. If they do, they got out somehow. The majority of people die when they're being trafficked. So, it's not an international problem. That's, that's one of the biggest misconceptions. It is actually a national problem. That's just talking about the children's side. That's just talking about people under the age of 18. And it goes on everywhere. It happens everywhere. 
A lot of people think it doesn't happen here. Um, the state I live in, they're trying to pass more laws. And you have legislators saying, from the state House of Reps saying, aren't you just making a solution for a problem that doesn't exist? This doesn't happen here. It happens over in places in, like Nigeria where they can have turtles and sell them off because they didn't like the fact that they were going to school. And that's, the sad truth is, it does happen here. Okay, so I did have some rules for trying to keep myself safe. I didn't want to get on the radar of the Department of Homeland Security. It's a college project, right? Don't want to get on law enforcement's radar unless I had to. And the other is basically any kind of crime cartel. Because the majority of the people that do this are doing this in groups. The professor actually advised me to start carrying a gun everywhere I go. Um, I'm not going to out people. I'm not dropping docs. I had a very nice, from last year, example of somebody doing trafficking on Craigslist. And we did a, you know, I showed, I showed the class live how to track this person up to a point. I'm not going to drop docs. The only way your name's going to get put in this list is if Department of Homeland Security outed you already. Why Homeland Security? Because they are the national lead for law enforcement on trafficking in the U.S. International is the State Department. Um, avoid questionable sites. Again, I don't want a bullet in the back of my head. I don't want silver bracelets. I, I think I have skill. I'm told I have skill. But I know there's way, 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 way many more people out there better than me. Right? So I'm not going to go out and try to be Billy Badass at white night on the internet and you know, try to solve this problem myself. What I want to do is I want to take this out of a reactive state and put it into a proactive state. Right now, everything in human trafficking is reactive. So, my question is when I started this project. What's most prevalent? What kind of trafficking do we see today? How's it different from Civil War era slavery? And can we use open source intelligence to actually do something about it? I use tools. I like Tails. I like Tor. It's designed to keep you anonymous. There's too many ways for it to fail. So I trust it to keep me anonymous. I don't trust it to keep me alive. Um, Zim Desktop Wiki, it's, a, it's what it sounds like. It's a desktop wiki that you put on your computer. You can sort data. Um, link analysis, anybody not familiar with Meltigo? OK. Case file is like Meltigo, but it's actually more like an analyst notebook, which would be the IT software. Um, it doesn't have the transforms natively, but you can actually load the, the entities into Meltigo and use the transforms too. Websites I used was uh, ICE through DHS, Facebook, Craigslist, Twitter, and Backpage. I'm, all, I'm usually asked, what does Zim Desktop Wiki look like? That's, what, that's a screenshot of my wiki for this. Those were, there's 21 cases up there that I got through Department of Homeland Security. So my methodology for this. I started off by going to Homeland Security because when I looked into it, I found out they were the lead agency. They're the ones that everybody else runs trafficking at, at operations through. They send out email news, news updates on a regular basis, which you can sign up for and, and get. They'll, top, they'll post their top five stories. But I use that as a reminder to go out and collect my data for that week. I went to their web, website, went through their news releases, parsed all this information by hand, put it into my Zim desktop wiki, and then put it into the link analysis software. Then, after I got the names and locations, I went back through, looked these people up on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, all over the place, right? Anywhere I could find information on them, I would. I'd use Spokio and other tools like that. Social media is being used today to recruit people. Um, so this is from a news story where a girl was approached on Facebook to go out, hey, you know, you sound like a great girl, I'm a little bit older, but you know, we should, we should hang out, we should play. I can buy you things, I can buy you nice things, I can take you out, your parents are assholes, I can take you out of that kind of situation. And he, she ended up getting trafficked, right? Facebook closes the accounts once the case has been initiated. They're contacted by law enforcement, and once it's proven a case that is a case of trafficking, they'll close the account. MySpace, they leave the accounts there. So you can find people previously and actually go back and find find their accounts. Nothing to be done with them. You can't add them as a friend. You can't put them in your top eight spaces. It's locked down. Craigslist is policed by its own members, and they're removed very quickly. And at least in this area, this area being the Midwest, 
Craigslist has gotten very good at it to the point where it's no longer useful to actually go there to try to pull things. Um, Backpage, everybody talks about how Craigslist got shut down for their adult services. It really just moved to the dating section. Um, Backpages, it's just porn, porn, porn everywhere. Prostitution. Now the problem is it's harder to tell because you've got people doing regular prostitution that are over 18 and people under 18. Um, Officer Cantel, he wrote a book recently about investigating human trafficking. He says the, the key indicators for those kinds of things is if they don't show their face or they say they've moved to the area recently, they're most likely being trafficked. But that's a reactive response. You're going through after they've, that's already happened. Twitter, there's no published data on what they do when it comes to human trafficking, or at least there was not any time the last time I looked. And Google is a mess. Why do I say Google's a mess? Um, most of these people were using Gmail accounts. Most of them use Google Voice. This is what analysis looks like. This is Link Analysis 101. What I have up there is just four cases from one operation. So you've got a case of, down here, I'm gonna come down and point to things. This guy here was traveling to the Dominican Republic to have sex with underage people. This guy up here, I actually found him on Facebook after the fact. In fact, it was really interesting. I, it was the first time using Altigo on the project. And I searched for the guy and it pulled up his Facebook page for me. And I had pictures of his arrest, so his arrest pictures, and pictures from his Facebook and was able to confirm that, yes, that is that guy. He was, profiting, or he was pushing a girl that he knew was under 18, having sex, forcing her out. He was using Craigslist and Backpage. Um, this guy up here, Arthur Chapel, was pushing two people. He was using Craigslist and or he was using Craigslist and Backpage. This one down here was a couple. The guy was pimping his girlfriend, and then they were running a stable on top of that. And the stable were underage people. Now this is all from Operation Predator, which is Department of Homeland Security attack against people that push kids. Um, and you can see, like down here in this section, starting. I've got a link for Department of Justice, and coming down to the bottom, that's all the law enforcement that was involved just in one case. But that's the lead prosecutor, the prosecuting attorneys that are doing it for the, state, for the Department of Justice, plus the Homeland Security officers. So I've now got not just a list of people to go look at on Facebook and build social networks on, start looking at who they're talking to and whatnot. Like this guy up here in um, Vanderhost, I may have said his name wrong, he was using Facebook, I got to his account before it was locked, because he had just been arrested, and went through and actually pulled all of his friends. One thing they all had in common, they had all liked the site Wet, Wet, Wet Seal, which is a clothing line. Find it in a bunch of different malls. Um, so my findings from the, the original analysis, Operation Predator was the largest one. The most involved agent was a person out of Texas. Now, like I said, I'm, I don't just have the traffickers, I now have the law enforcement and the lawyers working on them. And this is where that list of law enforcement people come in and it can be nasty. If I want to compromise the case, if I, want to do, if I want to change sides and I want to help the traffickers, I've got a list of people who I can go compromise. That doesn't mean kill. That just means bringing them into question. I've now, I've now contaminated every case they're working on. So it's going to slow it down. Um, operation Poker Chip is a really interesting operation. It was a group that was using people to, they were using poker chips to actually track the people that were in the stable. So they kidnapped people, put them in hotel rooms, and when the John would come in, they'd give them a poker chip. The poker chip was used to keep track of how many people at the prostitute service that day. What makes this a really interesting case, the lady was originally kidnapped from Mexico, taken to Atlanta, she escaped, got to Texas, somebody from the, somebody from the Trafficking ring, noticed her, knew her, recaptured her, took her to Oklahoma. She was, re she was able to re-engage the FBI, and they did the raid when she put a shoe in the window of the motel. It's, where they knew, it's, how, they, it's how they knew where to go. Um, most of all, prosecutors of a, pro of a trafficking ring in Seattle. Most oper the, the largest operation that they've done to date stretched from South Carolina to Florida. Its key state was Georgia, is Operation Dark Knight. That was actually a multi-part multi -part one. It was a gang plus. Um, and this is all information that you can find by just going through Homeland Security's website. 
There's other sites you can look at too. The most popular place they use is Backpage. And the most used social media is Facebook. So the question comes back, what type of trafficking is most prevalent? Globally, it's prostitution. Now, I've got an asterisk there, because where I live, it's not prostitution. Where I live, it's actually labor. So it's 60-40 in my home state. How does it differ today? Well, today it relies on drug addiction. It relies on abuse, threats. Now, the, the abuse and threats, that goes back to the Civil War, right? And they're using social media to get their people. But they, the big thing is it, the lack of public awareness. People think it doesn't happen here, right? They don't look because they don't think it happens. Um, good, good point in case. City near mine, 11-year-old girl. She went to this teen site. I got the story from, direct from her, her, her mom. Went to a teen site. It's designed for tweens, you know, junior high kids, to go out and put their iMessenger or iPhone numbers up so they can contact and, and do homework together and whatnot. She started getting texts from somebody that claimed to be 11 years old from Florida. This is last year. So this girl's like, hey, you know, you and your friends, because they, they had this little social group of 12 people, she's like, yeah, you guys should come down to Florida, we'll go to Disney World, we'll hang out, we'll have fun, we'll party it up, you know, be a good spring, spring, good spring break, because she's to high school. And I can get fake passports, we can go to Mexico. And nothing was said about it by the kid until she started getting pictures of other girls her age in what was definitely Mexico, made up to be the look older of makeup and completely nude. At which point she took it to her parents. Her parents took it to the police. The police were like, this doesn't happen here. It's a lack of awareness. People don't realize it's going on. And they've moved from 14 down to 11, and the age is getting younger all the time. So can open source intelligence be used to combat trafficking? I know this is going to fail, so, but I'm going to try it anyways. It's getting harder. They're, get, they're getting smarter in this. Um, first off, there's a company called Palantir. I don't know if you guys have heard, them, heard of them or not. They were on CNN last week. The um, presentation on CNN is how they're using big data to do better policing, policing in LAPD, or with the LAPD. But that's not the only thing they do. They're actually going through, they're taking all the different call centers that handle human trafficking, which are mostly done by pen and paper still, and correlating the data. And now you're, they're able to say, oh, we got a call from this phone number, and look up all the other times that number's been used. We got a call from this region, they're saying they're at their, their third address, it's looking up everything they're using. That's still reactive. It's getting better, but it's still reactive. It's not a proactive approach yet. So I'm gonna try a demo. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, like I said, I trust Tails to keep me anonymous, or Tor to keep me anonymous. I don't trust it for anything else. Hopefully, the network's not too slow. I know I'm running out of time. Actually, let's go straight to Detroit. because this is the one that's been the most interesting. Um, last week in Kalamazoo, they had somebody that was looking for someone to go to Paris with them, pay $1,000 a day, and your flight was included. They'd give you spending money for the day to take taxis and get food. The only condition was you had to service the person on demand. Seven-day trip to Paris, hey, all I have to do is have sex with a guy, he's just looking for a mistress because his wife can't go. Some point you might jump on that, I don't know. Um, Okay, that's being a little slower than I like. Plan B. Um, now, Backpage is, like I said, it's a wild west, but it's getting a little bit better. They actually have a comment on report human trafficking. Um, Brand New Gentleman's Club now opening. The funny thing is, and the reason that number is highlighted, when you actually look that phone number up, it should be the next slide, or the next image, yeah, the other thing the guy's doing besides looking for dancers is selling cars. Does that make sense to anybody? Now, I could take that number further. I could go into, if it was still active, CIDDB, which has been down for a while. It's a way to look up phone numbers. I could try spy dialing it to get his, his phone number, you know, listen to his voicemail, see what kind of deal it is. More than likely, that's a Google voice number. I haven't gone further to look at it because I just came across this a couple days ago. 
and I was more worried about getting the slide deck ready than actually going in and doing more analysis. Um, you know, Craigslist is used for other things. This was this one was kind of funny. I liked it yesterday. Um, the guy is looking for somebody to be his lookout. So it's not just regular crime that's being used on there. He wants to go do graffiti in the city of Detroit, and he's looking for somebody to be his lookout. He's going to pay them in hot dog and 40 ounce malt. Um, it was just one of those funny things that I came across. It's like, okay, it doesn't fit my, my project, but it's kind of funny. It shows that people are doing stupid stuff stupid. This was gone this morning. I found this at 1 o'clock in the morning. This was gone when I got up this morning. Um, this one is interesting, Oakland County. So that's north, north of Detroit. Um, anybody need $5,000 cash? Anybody want to send them a picture, see what you look like? Because they're making that a part of a requirement. Now this might just be a case of somebody trying to get um, pictures to add to their little private form collection of amateurs. Or it could actually be a case of they're promising you $5,000 and they're going to start tracking you out. Remember my rules, I'm, I'm trying to stay off radars. I'm not going to contact the person. I'm not going to change this from being an open source project into a human intelligence project. I'm not going to play the game with them because I don't have a support staff. I don't have a badge to carry. I don't have people backing me up if something goes wrong. I'm not a cop. I don't do stings. I'm not a white knight. I'm not here to save the world. Just try to make it better. Um, that's back to the back page. We talked about him. So that's the only pictures for that. We would have liked to have done that live, but apparently the, the demo gods were not with me today. Um, can open source intelligence be used to start combat, combating trafficking? Can we start looking at people before their accounts get taken down, building the links of their networks, and seeing whether or not it, we, we can start finding other people and getting ahead of them? I think yes, but really it's up to what you think. You know, I, can t I can stand up here and tell you my bias all day because I've done this before, but the case is, while I think it's yes, it's, it's getting harder, and I don't know if it's actually possible anymore. I still think it is. But you tell me, do you think you can actually go out and, and track these people down by using tools like Maltigo, searching, yes? Frequency analysis is definitely anything to look at. Um, that gentleman's club one where I said the guy's also selling cars. Craigslist is take, he's getting taken down on a daily basis. He's posted five times in the last week. Yes. Well, I don't think it's bad. I think there's being too reactive in it. So I don't want to sound like I'm trying to condemn law enforcement. I've got a lot of friends that are cops. Some of them have seen this presentation. They want me to come and talk to their departments. Um, some of them actually asked me to come join the force. But almost every local one has said the same thing. You'll be better off in the State Department or you'll be better off in DHS because they're the ones that handle this. Because they, they, they saw that view of it doesn't happen here. And it's not just them. It's, it's everybody. FBI actually is not a lead agency on this. I've talked to the FBI about this stuff. Yes, they did run an operation last year, but it was under the auspice of DHS. Um, thank you for attending, and we're going to move into questions.
Um, so he was talking about west of Indianapolis at the airport. People kidnapping kids with special needs, having to contact the airport and actually escorting them out of the country. There's um, in Michigan. There was a case where recently, where recently as in last year, they busted a guy for trafficking children in Michigan for forced labor. And the I'm, I'm running out of time. I got like three minutes left. Um, if that, the they didn't bust him on human trafficking. They busted him on Medicare fraud because they didn't have the laws in place yet. Um, basically, he faked the documentation. He stole the kids when he was in Africa, African-American Ameri African person. Immigrated here from Africa, brought four kids with him, and was doing, having them as forced day labor. And they went to the foster care system, which was a huge mess as well, but that's another talk for another time. And that's not really my story to tell. It's somebody else's, and she tells it very, very well. Um, it happens, and it happens everywhere. My bigger, this started off as, as, hey, look what we can do with open source intelligence, but really I'm more in, into the whole make public awareness now than what this project originally started off as. And that changed after I submitted this talk. Um, anybody else have questions? Quiet room. So are, is there anything practical we can do to start raising awareness? Talk about it. Talk about it amongst your friends. Talk about it amongst your family. Um, I've, I've tied into some local groups recently, and that's their whole thing. Just start talking about it. Do the whole, the whole grassroots thing with it and make people more aware of it. So he's saying a good source of data would probably be Amnesty International. If people don't know what Amnesty International is, everybody's a Star Trek fan, right? Everybody knows the Picard with the four lights. There are four lights. That was actually an episode that was backed by Amnesty International. Um, they're a really good organization. I know I'm out of time. They're a really good organization that helps with not just trafficking, but slavery, prisoners of war, um, Lots of great things. Um, their, their logo is a candle with barbed wire around it. Or was it a ribbon? Um, again, thank you guys all for coming out and listening to me for the last half hour. Hopefully I haven't ruined your day. And I think it's lunchtime, yes? Okay, go have a good lunch. <laughs>